Greetings, everyone, and welcome to virtual worship at Christ the King on Christmas Eve 2020. For readings, lyrics, and other important information, please see the video description below. Check in on our website, our Facebook page, and your email for frequent updates on our plans moving forward. Good evening, and welcome to the Lutheran Church of Christ the King on this Christmas Eve. I want to thank you for joining us for worship tonight. Um, a few things before we begin. One is that we will be sharing in the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And since you're not here, that means you'll have to prepare your own communion. And just uh, uh, something that's bread or bread-like, a cracker, and then also um, uh, wine or grape juice would suffice um, for, for uh, the wine. Um, ten, tonight, if you would like to brave uh, out in the cold, we are having a um, carols and communion service in the parking lot. Um, so you could join us for that at 9.30. Tomorrow morning, we will have our uh, regular Sunday morning Christmas uh, service at 9 o'clock. And finally, when we come to singing Silent Night, um, I would uh, advise you to maybe get a candle, and you could sing that and hold the candle up with us. And then on the fourth verse, we hold it up high like this. So if you'd like to join us in, uh, in a candle, Silent Night, at the end of the service, you could do that as well. Well, Merry Christmas, and thank you for joining us. We're going to begin now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, Christmas Eve, we light the candle of hope, candle of peace, candle of joy, and candle of love, and finally the Christ candle. We hear the word of the Lord from Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Glory to God in the highest, Alleluia. The Lord of hosts is born to us this day. We celebrate his birth, reminding ourselves that this baby in the manger is the source of our hope, peace, joy, and love. Be with us, Lord, this day and forevermore. Let us pray. God of hope, peace, joy, and love, we thank you for coming to us. We thank you for all you do for us, reminding us of your love on a daily basis. Help us to have hope for this world, find peace in our lives, find joy in the little things, and to love others as you have first loved us. God of promise, God of hope, thank you for coming into our darkness. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. 
Once again, let us pray. Gracious Lord God, you made this holy night. You made it shine with the brightness of the true light of Christ. Grant that here on earth, we may walk in the light of Christ Jesus our Lord. And in the last days, wake to the brightness of his glory. By your grace, adopt us as your children and enlighten us with your spirit to make the name of your Son known to all the world. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Wait for the This is the Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. It was while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to their hometown to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Now in that region there were shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night, when an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord showed all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, 
Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. For this day, in the city of David, is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. But Mary, she treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds then returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, and as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us us pray. Gracious Lord God, on this night, this holy and special night, we give you thanks and praise for your Son coming into our world, Emmanuel, God with us. We ask, Lord, that as we can't gather together physically, that you would bring us together spiritually, that we would know that we are all one in you. We pray, Lord, for this year, as it has been a difficult one, We ask, Lord, that you would surround us all with your love and your grace until the day, until we come home with you again. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I don't know if you know um, this story as well as I do. I've been doing it for, you know, 30-some Christmases. Uh, I could have done it memorized there, but I might have forgotten something, but it's a it's a, the story that um, each each year you come back to church, um, and each Christmas we hear um, Luke's story of Jesus's birth. Now, um, something I thought um, when I was um, looking over the Christ um, birth story again, and instead of maybe talking about the things that are in it, what hit me was some of the pieces that weren't in it, some of the questions I have that weren't answered um, by this gospel. Um, Things like, um, why did Caesar order a census of the entire Roman Empire? Um, How about, did the sheep see or hear the angels? Um, What does glory to God in the highest When they saw the glory of God, um, what does it mean when it shone around the shepherds and it shone all around them? How far were the shepherds out in the field from Bethlehem? Um, And how did how did the shepherds find the holy child? I mean, is a star like a well? Anyway, those are some of my questions. But being that this year this year has been a very hard and different year for us, being separated from our friends and our families, our family here at Christ the King, and uh, just the whole stress of of, uh, being separated, um, especially when we gather together uh, as a community to worship. But just because we haven't been able to get together physically, person to person, and just because we can't all come here tonight and be holding hands and singing and kissing each other, but whatever, um, doesn't mean that that stops Christmas and this story from coming. Like the shepherds, we are terrified of a strange new reality that has suddenly appeared before us, transforming the way we live, the way we work, the way we play. We marvel at the mystery of this baby born 
in a cattle trough um, to a poor, homeless, uh, peasant um, husband and wife. And yet, at the same time, we are, uh, Jesus is brought into the world in a kind of celestial um, uh, form by the creator of all space, time, and dimension. Our world, you know, views power in forms of uh, the same type of understanding they had in Jesus' day when Caesar could um, virtually bring into law anything that he wanted and people did not have a choice. They had to follow it. Um, but we can also relate to the reality where um, our towns and our city's infrastructures are so overwhelmed that we cannot even find a place for a young mother to birth her child. At the same point, Mary has come to terms with the fact that um, she's not going to be surrounded by her family and her friends for the birth of her child. She's going to be all alone to bring her new baby into the world. Yet, with all these things, the Son of God enters into the world, silent, placed in a feed trough, having to depend on others for help, having no power or influence over any, anyone or anything. Jesus is born in a world that is unaware of his coming. No fanfare, no baby showers, no celebrations with the one exception of the shepherds who were staying uh, in their fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And like a deadly virus that enters into our lives silently, invisibly, seeking out unsuspecting victims who are unable to protect themselves, a virus that has crept into our presence, creating fear and panic. Unlike a virus, however, Jesus comes into our world to teach, to heal, to bring peace to all peoples. The story comes to us every year at the same time with the angels and the shepherds, the baby in the manger, Mary pondering, um, filled with joy over the mystery that the infinite God of all time, all space, would be born into flesh to us and for us, Emmanuel. Now, the retelling of the Christmas story um, each year gives us a sense of togetherness. It's something we have in common. It gives us an assurance uh, in this insecure world that Jesus Christ did come to us and that he will come again and again and yet again. The Christmas story intends to awe and amaze us and that celestial being chose to incarnate itself in the lowest of forms, born as a baby and laid in a manger. Now, such a contrast to the way our world works, where sources of power are found in strengths of governments and armies, uh, superior technologies, Jesus enters the world resembling nothing like an earthly king. In contrast, the announcement of Emmanuel, God with us, entrance, is bestowed upon lowly shepherds at night, watching their sheep like low workers, like us. We can relate to that. Shepherds minding their own business, they look up to heaven and they, as they do every night. And when this, when, on this night, they are confronted by the angelic announcement that both mystifies them and terrifies them. The heavenly host fill the skies, overwhelming all the senses in their bodies. And what words 
to these messengers of God, speak to these lowly shepherds. Fear not. Fear not. Despite all the complexities and questions that the Christmas story throws at us, one proclamation stands out clearly, that a Savior is born unto us, for us, breaking through our cynical minds and our cautious hearts, beckoning us not to be afraid, but to trust, to trust him. Angel messengers appear to the lowly shepherds, keeping watch over their sheep, to announce that a Savior has been born. A Savior has been born for all people. A Savior that has been born to bring peace to the world. And a Savior who has been born, who favors his people. Now, to whom does God favor? Just when I thought I was finished uh, answering all my unanswered questions, this one comes to mind is, so who are God's favored people? Well, the answer is found in the story itself. Whether we hear it in person or download it or it's on a screen with or without family or friends, before or after we open our gifts or we have our dinner, or while we're partaking uh, in our uh, Christmas traditions, we gather around this story to sing the familiar Christmas carols, songs, hymns, which take us back, back in our memories to Christmas's past, reminding us of our parents, our grandparents, Memories of those who befriended us throughout our lives. We recall the candle lighting services, getting dressed up to go to church, um, giving gifts and receiving them, opening them, and gazing at all the beauty of the decorations that come with the season. So whether you grew up with all these things or you've been yearning to have them, it begins by being drawn into the story, the story of Christ's birth. We come looking for a savior, born in a manger, lying in the warmth of his swaddling claws, snuggled in the safety of his parents' arms, because newborns are fragile, they're fragile little things, dependent upon others to care for them. And like all of us, whether we're infants or youth or young adults or aging or elderly, wherever you fall on the spectrum of life in this world, we all, we all need to be cared for by family, by friends, by loved ones, swaddled in the arms of God's mercy, whether we know it or not. Now, I realize that this Christmas has been different for you. It's been different for all of us. And uh, I can't imagine, um, I couldn't have had imagined that it would ever um, be like this. But it is, and here we are. It's a Christmas that's different. We're not singing the carols in church. In church this year, it's different. We are not gathering together in big numbers this year. It's different. We are not anxiously awaiting the loved one to return home this year because it's different. And some of us may be enjoying uh, fewer amounts of gifts this year and less food at your dinner table this year because this year Christmas is different. But remember the first Christmas. The first Christmas was difficult. It was different. For Mary and Joseph, their difference was that 
there were no friends or family around them to help them birth her firstborn. They were in a, a strange town. They were not welcome, but had to sleep in a barn. For the shepherds, Christmas was different. Their lives had been interrupted by this heavenly host who forever changed their lives. It was different. For the world, Christmas was also different. No longer would sin or sorrow rule the world, but a new Savior was born in Bethlehem, ushering in a new year of God's favor. Whom does God favor? God favors you. God favors me. God favors uh, Rosaletta Gomez. God favors Rupa Gandhi. God favors Justin Jefferson. God favors John Johnson, Pete Peterson, Andrea Anderson. God favors his people. But really what matters is that God came into our world in the flesh, incarnated Emmanuel. And that makes us God's favored ones. So when you find yourself this Christmas feeling a, a, a little down, feeling different, I want you to remember who are favored by God. You are favored by God. Merry Christmas. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, for your favor upon us, we give you thanks. Remind us when we need to be reminded that you favor us. We give you thanks for this Christmas this Christmas Eve, and we give to you all the glory, honor, and praise. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Together, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious, holy, almighty God, you are the Most High. Great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for this coming into the world which fulfills your will and accomplishes all the things for your salvation, remembering Christ's command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise to come again. We give you thanks, Almighty God, not as we are ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your words and the Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, with these your gifts of bread and wine, so that we may, that we and all who share in this body and blood may be filled with Christ's heavenly blessing and grace, the receiving of the forgiveness of sins, and that we may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be given all the glory, honor, and praise, now and forever. Amen. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to um, take at home your bread and your wine and participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And as we say, this, this is the body of Christ broken for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. At this, this time, we would try, we'd like to try to sing Silent Night. 
And if you have your candle, um, make sure you um, safely light your candle. And uh, in just a minute, we'll try to sing together, Silent Night. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. the 
sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness, and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love.